Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Ryan Saplin here, personal trainer, fitness, fat loss expert, novice, power lifter, barbell enthusiast, coming to you today with a video about a story. A story. But first things first, if you're new to the channel and your goal is to lose body fat, I have a free fat loss guide called Seven Fat Loss Food Secrets in a link in the description. If you're interested in that, check it out and I'll send the book right over to you. But let's talk about the story that I want to tell you. It's a cool story, and I haven't really told it on the channel, I think. I, I told it on my podcast, but I don't think we haven't released it yet. Uh, it should be coming out soon. But I want to get better at telling it because it's somewhat interesting. It's very important to me because it's a big part of how my uh, career has developed. Uh, this was way back before, just out of high school. This is the setting. Before I became a personal trainer, I lost a bunch of weight because of football conditioning, I tried to stay in shape, reading all the magazines I could possibly can about weight loss and taking Xenadrin, Ephedra, all the supplements that you could you buy or afford. And after losing all this weight, I thought it would be pretty cool if I could become a personal trainer and help other people lose weight. I was, nine, I was 18, 19 years old, and I thought it would be pretty cool to do this. Well, I applied at 24-Hour Fitness, and the interesting thing is that well, this is another story in itself, is that if it wasn't for network marketing, which I currently despise at this current moment, but if it wasn't for network marketing, I would have never gotten this job because network marketing taught me to be persistent and uh, ob ob basically obnoxious. But the story is I almost got fired, and this is how it went. Uh, this is literally 15 years ago back in 2001. This is, uh, September, yeah, this is the year of September 11th. I remember my interview, I think the month or the day of, what happened was I actually had to, my my one of my, my first interview got rescheduled because of September 11th. It's sort of kind of fascinating. That's how you remember these things. I'm sure you can remember, especially, I mean, everyone can remember, but if you're American or if you were anywhere near your New York City or had family there, I'm sure you understand. But back to the topic. Let's stay on topic here. So... What happened was, I get this job, I get hired as a personal trainer, working for a manager. I'm pretty ambitious, you know, I want to succeed. Uh, but what happens is, we go to this five-day training, right? Five-day training to become a personal trainer called 24-Hour Fitness University. This is back in 2001. And it's a five-day course. Uh, you go through four days of training, and then on the fifth day, you take a, uh, you take a test. You take this test, and this test basically tells you whether you pass or not. And if you pass, you become a personal trainer for 24-hour fitness. Well, what I decided to do, my, uh, my dumb ass decided to skip the last day because I had this event I had to go to for my network marketing business at the time. I was really into it. And I did not, I failed to notify my manager. And why did I fail to notify my manager? Well, uh, for whatever reason, I felt really bonded to the instructors and I asked them permission if I could just take the last day next week or maybe next time and for whatever reason I did not think that my hiring manager this is me being stupid in 18 not realizing that I could probably I should, probably should ask permission from my boss well what ends up happening is like I, uh, I, I miss the last day and I um, I'm not able to take the test and my boss at the time was not very happy with me but because I'm young and I'm dumb I want the job so bad because he was gonna. He said that I was gonna lose my job. He, he sort of said. It. He basically said, "I don't know if you're gonna work here anymore." And then I was just shocked, you know. So I remember walking in there, and I was telling him, you know, I was really, cr I was almost crying my eyes out, but not, and not in a sad way. More like I was. I learned about tight hip flexors. That's sort of one of the things that changed my life about becoming a personal trainer. Because I used to have all this back pain and back problems, and I went in there. I'm telling him, you know, I learned about all these things and I was like so excited. I was exuding all this passion. I was excited and I was hoping to change his mind, but he still said he had to think about it or, you know, anyways, to make a long story short, what ends up happening or how I saved myself was that I emailed the vice president of fitness, Eric Jenkins. He's a pretty, he was a really inspiring uh, speaker. He was vice president of fitness at the time. Unfortunately, uh, he's the late Eric Jenkins. He passed away in a car accident. But he's very inspiring. Changed a lot of lives. Went up very high in the ladder in 24-hour fitness. And he was, man, I can't tell you, I can't tell you enough about how, what happened during those times. Um, so I wrote this email to him, and I wrote it pretty well. 
because I, I was okay writer. I think I, I, I think I'm a decent writer. And I tell him, I, basically my sales pitch to him in the email was, look, you already spent all this money on me. You know, you're gonna have to pay me eight hours each day. You're gonna have to be paid this money. And if you got the worst you can do, I mean, you gotta. I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, if you don't let me take the test or at least try to take the test, you're gonna waste all this money. And I'm not gonna be working for you guys. So at least you gotta give me a chance. You should give me a chance. So that way you can recoup your investment. I said something. I basically made it a business proposition. You have to hire me, otherwise, you're gonna waste all this money. And uh, what do you do when the when your boss's boss's boss? emails you and says, I think you should give this guy a chance. What are you going to do? You say no. In corporate America, you don't do that. And I get to keep my job. And that's how I save my job. Now, that's not quite where the story ends because there's a bit of drama and a bit of, um, how do you say, turmoil. Because I went over my manager's head to, you know, to, you know, the head of the company or head of fitness at the time, right? And I did not even, you know, I'm, a, I'm really a dumb 18-year-old kid. I have no idea what I'm doing. I really don't. I mean, I, I don't know anything about corporate politics. I'm terrible with personal relations. All I know is that I was ambitious. I wanted this job, and I was excited. And um, so I get to keep my job. But uh, throughout the process, my job became very difficult because I went over his head. Now, none of this is really verified, or I think someone did tell me about this. But anyways... He would, uh, I just know that this manager uh, that I had made my job difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I was told anyway. I didn't get clients. It was very difficult for me. I, wore, I worked off the clock quite a bit. Um, and that was actually a problem within 24-hour fitness for quite some time. And uh, it all happened, you know. This is all this stuff happened. It was, it, was, it was terrible because, you know, I was just a kid. And I was just trying to make it. I was living at home. You know, and I was almost going to quit. I remember working like, like a whole month straight without any days off, just taking what I could, you know, free sessions, talking to people on the floor, which was by you, mind you, very terrifying for me. And I was able to do it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I didn't I was able to do it, but it was very difficult. But one little tidbit of information that's kind of funny is that what happened, you know, there's this thing when you sell training, you try to get like a, it's called a TO or turnover and when you get like a manager or maybe a more senior trainer to kind of help close the sale and uh, I was told that that my manager would actually bomb and purposely lose the sale and um, you know I, we all make mistakes I'm sure he's not like that anymore but I mean you know he was young too we were all young you know just basically dumb kids making bad choices because of ego and I'll tell you right now that that was a rough year for me or a rough several months. It was so difficult. I can't tell you. I remember I used to sweat so much. I mean, I still get kind of, I still feel uncomfortable training and coaching people sometimes. Not nearly as much as I used to, of course. It just depends on who it is, of course. Depends on the personality. But I'll tell you right now that I get, I would sweat profusely. I thought it was because I was overweight or I had too much hair because I had a lot of hair at the time. I used to wear gel and slick back my hair. Well, what would happen was I would, I would, I would sweat, you know, I would sweat a ton, you know, I would just sweat so much training clients. And I, I, I it looked like I was nervous. I was kind of nervous, but I wasn't as nervous as much as I, as I was sweating. And if you've been over overweight and you sweat a lot or you just a, you're just a sweater like me, you might understand because it's pretty embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. But so that's sort of the end of the story. And so I my, my point, what is the moral of the story and why did I want to tell it? Well, first of all, I want to practice telling it because I think I can tell it better. But one of the things is that, you know, if you really want something bad enough, it's kind of better to be a dumbass sometimes because you're focused on a goal. You don't have all this, the weight of the world, of all this knowledge of people in your life or past experience to weigh you down. But all you know is you want this thing. In my case, I wanted to be a personal trainer. I wanted to help people lose weight. I wanted to change people's lives. That was my goal at the time. That's all I thought about. I wanted this job so bad. And I was like basically willing to do whatever I could do it. And and you have and what it unlocked the creativity in my mind of what I could possibly do. I know how to use email. I emailed Eric Jenkins. You know, actually one of the reasons why I emailed him was because he said that if you ever need anything from me, you can email me. You know, and I I said fucking I'll email him, you know. I remember emailing to Eric Jenkins and saying, hey, you know, I want your job. You know, this is such a long time. I wanted to climb the corporate ladder so bad before. Uh, this is a long time ago. And I really wanted to do this, you know. And, and then I said, I want your job. I'm coming for your job. And then he replies back and says, 
Don't sing it, bring it. That was his uh, thing. Anyways, my point of the story and what I want to emphasize to you is that, you know, the keep life simple. Focus on your goals because, you know, I think back to that time, 15 years ago, I was 18 years old, 19 years old, I think, and I was just like so focused on just one thing. You know, and you just focus from one thing to the next thing. And sometimes, you know, as you get busier, you get older, you get so caught up with so many different things in your life. And I haven't been able to, I've accomplished more since I, you know, in this last like year, as far as like trying to build my dream than I've have ever. And one of the reasons why is I started focusing on less things. Building the channel was one of them, you know, making my fat loss product, you know, building my email list. All these things became what it was today. It's because of focus and the cool thing about being young, young, dumb kid is, uh, you know, maybe I wasn't that dumb, but I mean, definitely, you know, you just, you don't think, you don't overthink things. And, and you know, just as a relationship to the barbell, deadlifting, heavy weight, squatting, you know, basically all your training, when you're at the meet and you're about to power lift and lift as much possible weight as you can, and you're about to rip the weight off the ground or get under a heavy ass barbell for a squat, you know, all you can really think about is getting it done. You know, all your training up to that point is going to happen or it's not going to happen. You got that one chance or three chances in this case, right? Three attempts. And you just, you you either do it or you don't. You get it done or you don't. And But then you can only get to that point if you have enormous focus. And that is the one thing that I get from powerlifting that I love so much is that it really makes you. Because the part of it is you have this fear, right? This fear of getting killed or crushed by the bar or hurt or failing or missing the lift or maybe looking embarrassed, making maybe looking bad. And in order to essentially kill that fear and eliminate it you have to zero in on what it is that you want to accomplish and you cannot back down at all because if you do back down and you'll lose focus and you'll miss the lift or you'll increase the chance of missing the lift and i don't know that's how you get rid of fear you just you feel it you feel the fear and you just do it and uh, everyone has a process of doing this it's a little more complicated than that and maybe in another video i'll talk more about that but it's just, it really is just do it like Nike. But again, it's the process of how you get there and getting focused at a bigger overarching goal. You know, previously I talked about like being introverted and not wanting to talk to people and, and having fears. You know, we all have fears, but the fear you'll always feel. And so really, it's really about learning how to deal with that fear. And the way you deal with that fear is, well, here's my simple solution right now. I'll just end this video with is that you have to have a bigger goal. The goal has to be big and important enough for you to trample over that fear. Just as an example, my kids. If anything were to happen to my kids, I would do anything They're for their safety. Anything. I would give my life. You know, and there's, I don't think there's anything that I would, you know, and you know, that's, and you don't have to have kids that I feel this particular way about something. Obviously, it's a little different context, but you have to have that sort of bigger, bigger purpose. So that's my talk. Thanks for listening. Got a question? Email me at ryansaplin at yahoo.com with a question or leave a comment below. Join my email list, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.